In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can internationalize SOT schemas. So if I come here to this modal and then type in something that is invalid, as we can see, we get name is required and amount must be greater than zero. But what happens if I change over to Spanish? Well, if I do the same, as we can see, the messages are now in Spanish. So how did I accomplish this? Well, let's take a look at the form. So I'm using React Hook form, but you can use whatever you want, of course. Here I have the resolver, so SOT resolver, and then I have a function, and we pass in the international messages. So I'm using the use translations hook, which pretty much an internationalization library will have this convention. That way I can inject the messages. So I'm constructing the schema based off the messages. So let's take a look at this function. As we can see, this function returns a sort object. So set that object, and then we specify the fields. But as for the messages themselves, well, remember, we're passing the translating function from the namespace, so general info input. And as we can see, the key, so what we can pass in are all of these keys. This is just for that type safety. And then we can pass in an object, which is like the arguments. So when you need to pass in a variable to your messages, so for example, here, we have duration must be less than max. Well, we can keep the same functionality here. And well, this is optional because not all messages have placeholders like this. And now that we have access to this callback function, all you need to do is invoke it. Now, the reason this callback is optional is because of the server. Servers do not require internationalization. Only the front end needs one. So the user interface. So in that case, I mark this as optional so that when I want to use this schema in the server, then it is going to use the default message at the same key. So as we can see, I declare this object that has the exact same keys as this one. So the same. But this is hard coded so that when we try to invoke this function and use it in the server, it is going to use these ones instead. But in fact, SOD doesn't require you to pass in a message. What you can do is actually get rid of this knowledge qualising operator. And as you can see, it receives either string or undefined. If this is undefined, that means that SOD will use its own message. But this is just for demonstration purposes so that I can show you how you can still maintain customized messages in the backend. But if it were up to me, I would avoid this altogether. And well, if we do not provide anything, then we should just use the default values for the backend. I only care about the frontend, which in the end is the user interface for your backend. But I guess that depends entirely on your project requirements. Now, what about the types? Where do all of these come from? Well, if I scroll up, as we can see, we have the general info input messages. And this is key of international messages. And then we pass in the namespace. So the translation files are collocated to the input. And this is what I like to do. Since these messages only apply to this file, why would I create it in a top level file? It doesn't make sense. So I collocate them and then I have a script that is going to take all of these messages and it is going to add them to this file right here. So for English and for Spanish automatically. And this is getting picked up by my declaration file, my global declaration TypeScript file. And we just extract the types and then we declare an interface international messages. That way we can get a full type safety. And so we can say key of international messages. We pass in the namespace and then we get the union of all of the available messages. That way we get a full type safety here, but also here. So if we were to pass in a function, so a T function that doesn't correspond to this namespace, for example, instead of form T, we pass in T. As you can see, we get a type mismatch error. So we can leverage full type safety here. And also we get the great benefit of being able to have autocomplete here. 
So if I hit control space, as we can see, we get all of the available messages. Now, as for the arguments, I told you we're passing in the object as well. So you can still maintain the same behavior as the original T function. So here I have T at weekly duration max, and then I pass in this object. And as we can see, I pass in the variable. So the value for the max variable, which again is defined here with the ICU format. And this is pretty much it. This is how you can use internationalization with SAR. Now, as for retrieving the type for the schema, all you need to do is do the same. So set.infer, and then you just pass in return type, type of get general info input, because well, the function when invoked returns the SAR schema. So you can still do whatever you want, like refine or super refine, whatever you want. This is just for injecting the messages. Now here I have another example. Now this one is way more basic, but still allows you to get the gist of how everything works. So again, type messages, we say key of international messages, and we pass in the namespace, and then we define the callback, key is of type messages, and then the object, so translation values from next intel, and then we return the schema and we pass in the messages if they apply. In other words, when it's in the client, if it's in the backend, just use the default values from SAR and we export the type as simple as that. So as you can see, it is a little verbose. You need to create the parent function to return the schema, but well, the developer experience is unmatched. And if you're using collocation like I am, it should be a breeze to work with. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one.